Okay, today I'm at Sydney Olympic Park. Um, <clears throat> hopefully this works out better. The last um, video I made was at uh, Belmoral Beach. And uh, do watch that. Um, but the microphone didn't work, which is why the audio is so bad. But I put it up anyway, because, you know, hey, you've got to deliver. Anyway, the big deal about today is, at Belmoral I was using a new-to-me Takihara 4x5. Today, I've got my only the second ever film camera that I've bought new. And that is a Intrepid. An Intrepid Mark V Black. Um, um, it needed a bit of fettling. One of the things that I like doing with, um, with old cameras is I actually like fixing them up. In fact, I like fixing old cameras up more than I like um, making photos with them, to be honest. And um, fortunately or unfortunately, the, um, the Intrepid did need a little bit of fettling before I was pleased with it. Um, but having said that, uh, it's a seriously cool camera. I, am, um, I have an engineering background. And not industrial engineering, a bit of electrical engineering, but I, I grew up on a farm and my dad was a mechanic. And um, seriously, what they have done to make that low cost product is amazing. Um, um, intrepid people, if you're watching this, I'm not gonna jump on and say, oh, but it's this or that or whatever else. No, it is amazing. Um, it is amazing. It's really easy for people to say, oh, but you should have done this. Um, I'm not going to do that. I will just say that I made, I've done, I won't talk about what fettling I did because um, I'll save that for another video. But um, I've done two things. One of them was I made this screen protector, okay, which is just a bit of board with these loops on it. The loops hook around the, um, the knobs on the front standard and that does two things. Um, it, well, I'll, I'll come to that. It holds the protector on when it's in the bag. The second thing I did was I made this little stand thing because compressing that down will break these locks here. And that stops that while I'm moving it. But that back, notice that when you open the camera, those loops hold the, the bellows up in place and it looks, it's, it, um, it looks beautiful and it keeps everything neat and tidy. Um, there is a problem that is that the um, the protector falls off, but that's another story. Um, what I would like to do, even better, would like uh, Intrepid to do, is to um, make these screws here stick out so that you can push it on or make a little clip on it so that so that you can clip the protector on because I think having those this pulled in is going to stop people is going to help people fold up the camera better because one of the and this isn't just an intrepid thing one of the things with folding field cameras is the bellows get scrunched uh, uh, particularly wooden ones, but metal cameras like um, um, uh, Toyo 45As uh, and Ritrek view cameras as well, in particular as well. Anyway, I'm going to be using 
The other thing that I've done here is I've added a scale here and I've calibrated it for optical centre of different lenses. What I'm going to be doing today is um, showing that Intrepid says that um, the camera only works with 75mm lens. This is a Fujinon 65mm lens in a very deep 21mm recessed lens board and it fits and it works okay you do have to lift up the you do have to get the optical center lined up otherwise you'll get the front in the um, the image if you're not careful ah what was the other major change I made to the camera I added these um, plastic pieces here and with that I can feel when the camera back is upright okay might not be perfectly upright but that's basically a way of really quickly finding the zero setting see that Intrepid, if you're looking, um, you might think about implementing that. You don't have to change any of your current mouldings. Um, in fact, on this camera, you're 3D printing some washers. You could just th 3D print that instead. Anyway, back to where we are. No, I'm not going to include this. I might not include this in the thing because I don't, I don't want to tell you what you're doing. Because you're doing a great job. Okay, 65 millimeters. Said it can't be done. Let's have a look. The trick with a wide lens like a 65 is um, it's, you can mount any lens you want onto the lens board. It's whether you're going to get the thing to focus on infinity. So let's take a look. Oh, problems. And well, there we go. It's focus on infinity, and there's even a little bit of back focus. So that's about infinity there. Let me get the loop. It's easier to do this with my phone, eh? Here we go. So this is moving out, so focusing closer. This is focusing back. You can see that there's a couple of millimeters of uh, back focus there. So there you go, intrepid people. You can do it. You can use a 65 mil. So take a look at that. I know it's a bit hard, but there you go. Okay, that's that's that picture there. Notice that it's just foreground. That's a bugger, isn't it? So this here, this here is actually looking very nice. So, what do we do with that? Well, 
if I tilt the camera back, all of my verticals are going to start um, converging. So what I've got to do is I've got to add a bit more lift here. But notice that my bellows are getting very compressed. So that's about as much as I can do. See how this is getting compressed here? Okay. Uh, when you start compressing your bellows like that, this bit here can sometimes project into the image. It can be hard to see. Now oh, looks that's fine. So you can see that I've still got a lot of foreground. Um, what would happen if I rotated, made a portrait? Well, it's going to make it worse, isn't it? Cool. So, I'm actually going to, what am I going to do? See, if I tip that back, it doesn't really make it much better. I'm going to have to tip it so much further back. So what I've got to do, really, is... get something interesting in the foreground. So, I've got this. Hmm. I'm worried about leaving my stuff here. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put this stuff back in the car. Ugh. No, just going to have to man up. So the problem is that I need a fancy foreground. All right. So what about these shadows here? What can we do with these shadows? I do like the, um, the bright highlights on that metal work there. Now, I've, de I've unleveled my camera. So, let me level my camera again. Now, Clearly the level app isn't happy. Yeah, I see this. Well, that's as weird as it gets. So my level isn't telling me what I think it's telling me. Okay. That's a bugger. Ah, white obvious. Okay. So this is what I've ended up with. And I'm going to run with that. Be nice if that um, 
person on the bicycle stays there. Okay, so we tighten everything down. I'm not going to do any fancy, tricky, um, fancy, tricky, uh, tilty, shifty thingies. I'm just going to stop down. So, um, about the Intrepid, I, I'm in Australia. That was, oh, ended up being about $600, maybe just under $700. Now, for my light metering, I'm just going to use incident. I'm using FOMAPAN 100, so always check on your light meter that your ASA settings right. See that? FOMAPAN 100. I've zeroed my meter, and I'm going to use F22, so it's a 30th at F22. It's a 30th, it's F22 and a third, but I'm just going to use F22 because a bit more light's not going to hurt me. Actually, 30th, I'm going to use F32. Um, F30 is 1 15th, which is way as much as it is. Now, the thing with um, recessed lens panels, lens boards, is operating the lens becomes extremely difficult, which they never really tell you about. Okay, so let's check. 1 15th, F32, beauty. I've actually got a spot meter with me, but I don't feel like learning spot metering today. Okay. So, intrepid now. Make sure everything's locked down on the camera here. It's tight. It's tight. Um, the intrepid is unbelievably lightweight. Um, I had my um, my. Um, it's not a Takahashi. Maybe it is a take My Takahara. I had my Takahara last week. I need my cable loose. I had my Takahara last week at um, at Balmoral. And that camera weighs about 1.9 kilograms. I've got no idea what that is in flaming um, metric system. Ah, uh, sorry, imperial system. Yeah. Um, why do I do large format? For the exercise. I actually do. Yeah. Okay. So, lens stop down. F32, 1 15th of a second. Can you see that? Yep, hope so. Click, click, make sure it all works. Now, one thing with a light, lightweight camera is. Um, it's actually easy for the camera to be disturbed by the wind. So um, I can't do it on this tripod, but if your tripod had a hook on it, you'd hang hang your um, you'd hang your bag. No, I'll actually do it. You'd hang your bag from the hook. You'd hang your bag from the hook like that. Um, I can't actually do it on this camera this tripod, but there you go. Cool. Hey, okay, now the gentleman on the, the bike left, I don't blame him. Okay. Forgot to cock the shutter. Beauty. Okay. Shot number one off. It's always good getting the first shot off. Now, now what am I going to do? Now, here's the magic thing that I've got. I have got, I've done the widest lens that you can use. This is the longest lens you can use on an Intrepid, which is a 400 millimeter. And in order to make this work, I have to move the front standard to the forward most point. Now, this is the fiddliest thing with these style of cameras. I say these style because the Intrepid isn't the only camera that uses this screw in front standard. Apparently, it's based on a camera design made by a maker called Philips. Not the, um, 
not the electricity maker, the light bulb maker. Um, Phillips. And the intention of it was to be um, as lightweight. The, uh, the gentleman was an engineer and wanted to make something that was uh, mechanically simple. Um, with a certain elegance and uh, stuff. So Philips cameras look very much like this. In fact, this is a Philips style camera. Um, I, I won't be rude and say Intrepid copied it. They did, but that's not the point. There's only three or four different styles of, of cameras and everybody, everybody uses it, you know. Um, camera making is a, is a solved problem camera designing and nearly every nearly every possible design variation has already been made by somebody anyway so this is a Fujinon 400 millimeter lens uh, and it's equivalent in 35 mil is can't remember. Where's my chit chat? Oh, did I put where to put my chit chat? Here we go. Is 400 mil is it has a 240 millimeter image circle, which means it's got 44 millimeters of movement. It's the equivalent of an 85 mil, so it's a portrait lens. The equivalent of it's a telephoto lens. Uh, which is why it's so long. Telephone lenses tend to be long. Notice that a lot of the lens, most of the lens hangs out forward of the, um, the lens standard. So lenses like this really test the rigidity of the camera. Um, and the tripod for that matter. And, and, and the head. So I've got that open. Um, this is an F8 lens. Now... The thing with an 85mm lens is I'm standing really too close. You'll notice that uh, I'm going to have to wind this quad out a bit to make it focus. Okay. That's currently focused on the, the tree there. And that's, that's my extension there. Okay. Um, Nikon make a 500mm telephoto lens. But it's too long for this camera. This, this camera doesn't have the bellows. Don't panic, Intrepid. Very few. 4x5 cameras have enough bellows extension for those really long lenses. Okay, so let me focus on infinity. So, one of the tricks with these long lenses, of course, is that uh, well, what am I going to take a picture of? Tickets. I mean, the lazy thing is I just stand here and I just take a picture. Um, have some people as they walk by. Uh, that might not be a, a too stupid idea. I mean, it's lazy. Yeah, look, it's lazy. But I'm doing sort of camera testing. I'm a little bit lazy. The other thing is, if I wanted to do a telephoto shot of this stadium, I'm going to have to go all the way up to the top of the hill, and then I'm going to get these trees in the foreground. You know what? Let's do that. Okay. That's the magic thing where I just like suddenly appear at the top of that hill. Um, this is the old, uh, there are two versions of this 400mm Fujinon lens. This is the old single coated version. My particular example has some damage on the uh, lenses. Um, 
that it was sold as parts. Right, it was sold for parts and I got it for really cheap and it turned out that the damage uh, doesn't really affect the image quality that much. Okay, where are we? Okay, now as we're moving back, can you see the perspective changing? And they are galahs. Why did you turn off? I, um, Todd Carroll and Ben Horn and all that that do a lot of filming, I don't know how you do it and I have to work out how you do it. Um, I have enough trouble um, just, just making the photographs, let alone making photographs and making videos at the same time. Seriously guys, I'm impressed. That's what I've got. Wow, that is how long this lens is. Uh, I know there's a hot spot. Not much I can do about it. Look how long this lens is. So I need, still need to go way further back. If I want to get something other than that. So what I'm going to do. Well, I'm practicing my squatting here. I might rotate the back, portrait mode. Wow, that's huge, isn't it? I'm gonna have a little bit more rise so that I get the name of the. Um, the stadium into the picture. Here we go, 40 millimeters of rise, it's about max. No, 35, so I'm just under. If I get the rise wrong, I'll end up with black corners on the, uh, the negative, maybe even a fully black circle. That are very difficult to see. Here we go, how's that? That's pretty interesting. How about that? Oh, where is the focus? Now I'm gonna move the focus here. You can see the focus going in and out there, hopefully. Yep. So there's my rise, that, that dot is the optical centre, that's the centre of the image, so I've risen 35. I added that scale and I added the dots by the way. Cool. So, <coughs> what was it before, 1 15th at f32, I reckon we'll run with that again. 1 15th of 32. Oh, we're going to remember to cock it this time. Yay! Here we go. Sorry. Notice that's a bit bouncy. Okay. That's the limitation of using big telephoto lenses. And uh, look, it, it, it's like with 35mm, right? If you're using a 400mm lens, it's big and heavy. This is a 400mm lens. It's big and heavy and um, it's very difficult to work with. Which is why, if you're starting out, stick between, um, now, let's go through this again. That's tight, yep. I'm gonna just get it with those people walking between the tickets there. One, two, three, there we go. Okay, 